Good morning. The entrance hymn is number 300, The God of All Grace. The God of all grace has blessed us this day. All of creation joins us in praise. Lifting our voices, lifting our hearts to the glory of God. Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you heartily to this Sunday, the 31st Sunday in ordinary time. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, therefore, and conscious of the fact that we are seen as before God, let us be truly sorry for our sins now. Let us turn towards God in true and in sincere repentance to ask for his mercy and for his gift of peace. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and may he bring us to life everlasting. Oh 
Pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. We make a praise through you, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way, and have caused many to falter by your instructions. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I busy not myself with great things, 
nor with things too sublime for me. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved, you had become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and trudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly, that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word, but that it is truly the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things, whatever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not move they would not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself 
will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. My dearly beloved in Christ, all our three readings today try to address one and the same issue, namely the failure of leadership. It is a problem that is as old as humanity itself. Reading through the scriptures, we see a lot of that in both the Old and the New Testaments. It is even the same, if not worse, in our world and virtually in every society today. Leaders in every aspect of human endeavor have failed to meet up with the responsibilities that have been given to them based on trust. We see in our first reading, for instance, that after the exile, Haggai and Zechariah gave leadership to the Jewish people. And while they provided this leadership, the temple was rebuilt and the survival and expansion of Judaism seemed assured. A century later, however, Malachi addressed a miserable situation. That the priests were failing to perform their regular sacrifices and other duties, especially offering solid teaching. As a result of this, God was moved to rage with the Israelites and God threatened to turn into curses the blessings that the priest pronounced. The people were not only estranged from God, but they were also divided. They had forgotten that they were creation of a common father. Now, my dearly beloved in Christ, this is a situation that is not peculiar to that time. It is a situation that is not peculiar to the people of Israel. It is a situation that we see everywhere, even in our society today. That a lot of people among us who have been charged with the responsibilities of leadership have failed in their responsibilities. We see situations where fathers have abdicated their responsibilities as fathers. Many a father today, my dearly beloved in Christ, have failed to make the necessary provision for the upkeep of their families. We see a situation where mothers have also failed in their own responsibilities as mothers. They have failed to provide the moral upbringing that they are supposed to provide to their children. Is it in the church? We see a lot going on. That today you see a number of priests at loggerheads with their parishioners. Concerning the financial situations of the parishes. That priests have failed in their own responsibility to provide the necessary cases that the people need. All that the people need to bring them closer to God. Some of our priests today have failed to pay attention to that. Instead, they are concerned about what they stand to gain financially. A lot of our priests don't take time to sit down and prepare their reflections or homilies. I, for one, I am guilty of that. Sometimes I just feel I could just go up there and say anything. But is that how it's supposed to be? No. Because what I go up here to tell the people is not my word, it's the word of God. And I need to tell them exactly what God wants them to know. And not what I want them to know.
Is it in our offices? Is it in government institutions? These things are happening, my dearly beloved, in Christ everywhere, in our schools, in our churches, in our homes, and in government offices. I remember talking here last week about those who are bosses in their offices. That many of us have become so bossy that we sit down on our rolling chairs and issues, command, dish out, you know, boss people around without providing the necessary guidance and leadership that is required. The protection of the lives and properties of many citizens, many governments have failed to carry that out. Is it in the judiciary? We see a lot of miscarriage of, just, of justice. And I have told people time and again, because sometimes when you talk about leadership, we are quick to look at those in upper in the upper class, the government and things like that. But like I said, each and every one of us has a special way in which, in which God has entrusted him or her with an office of responsibility. Are you a father? You have a responsibility towards your family. Are you a mother? You have a responsibility towards your children. Are you a firstborn child with siblings behind you? You have a responsibility towards your, your siblings because you are a leader. So what are, you with, what are we doing, my dearly beloved in Christ, concerning this? In our second reading, from his first letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul writes about himself and his work or ministry. Some would not have distinguished him from other wandering teachers common in that Greek world. Many of these were only interested in themselves and their financial advantage. Paul clarifies the nature of his work and its motivation. He cared for his converts like a mother. They were his brothers and sisters. He took no money from them. He walked day and night, my dearly beloved in Christ, exercising his trade as a tent maker in the workshop of Jason. Confirmed Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 6. Malachi, in the first reading, would have had found nothing to criticize about the activities of St. Paul. This is to say, my dearly beloved in Christ, that there is always an exception, and you and myself can be that exception. We can begin to think anew and begin to change our ways. We must try to understand what is our own responsibility. Not necessarily towards our families, but towards our brothers and sisters, whom like us we are created in the image and the likeness of God. So we can begin to turn a new leaf. In the gospel passage, Jesus concludes his activity in the temple with a long denunciation of the Pharisees who seemingly are hard to reconcile or to be reconciled with the Jesus who was meek and humble of heart as found elsewhere in the gospel of St. Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. In Matthew, as we heard in today's gospel passage, the Pharisees represents not only the Pharisees of Jesus' time, but also the leaders of hostile synagogues of his own time and even members of his own community whose Christianity has gone sour. Our passage opens by seeming to approve the teaching, if not the example of the Pharisees, who earlier have been called blind guides whose teaching is not to be followed. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 14, and the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 6. The disciples of Jesus, which include you and me, my dearly beloved in Christ, are to practice a higher righteousness more than that of the Pharisees. Confer the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 20. What is said must be endorsed by what is done. In other words, 
We are not just to be talkers. But we should be seen doing what we are talking. I have told people time and again that people are tired of hearing homilies being preached. What people want now is to see homilies being lived. So we are supposed to be examples. We are supposed to serve as leaders. The Pharisees in today's gospel were criticized on three grounds. First, through their teaching, they had distorted the law, which should have been a delight and should have been a lamp to the people's feet and a light to their path. Confer Psalm 119, verses 105. And what should have been an easy and a light, what, would have, what should have been easy and light like the yoke of Christ in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 30, they turned it into a burden. Confer the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verse 12. Secondly, they wore their phylacteries and tassels with the quotation of the law to win admiration rather than provide edification. Confer the book of Exodus, chapter 13, from verse 1 to 16. And also the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, from verse 4 to 9. They were like those who performed the traditional works of piety, such as prayer, fasting, and alms given just for ostentation. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 18. Thirdly, they loved titles which obscured the one fatherhood of God and the one brotherhood and sisterhood of God's own family. This section of the gospel, my dearly beloved in Christ, reflects the egalitarianism of Matthew's church. Though the keys of the kingdom of God had been given to Peter in the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19, and the greatest in this kingdom, we are the little ones, as seen in the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, from verse 1 to 6. The only father the disciples have in today's gospel is their father in heaven. Confer the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 30. The only greatest, sorry, the only greatness they were to seek was that which is measured by the quality of their service towards others. The gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 20, verse 27. Beloved in Christ, are we ready to humble ourselves and to see the greatness that is found only in the service that we are rendering to our brothers and sisters. May the words of the Lord be blessed in our hearts. Amen. Peace be with you. To all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, God's faithfulness and mercy are stronger than death. Therefore, we offer our prayers with confidence. For prophets and martyrs, for eloquent preachers and caring pastors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for voters that their choices reflect a loving heart and judicious wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. For the gift of peace in many countries throughout the world, marked by war and conflict, especially in Israel and Palestine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. For those who carry new life and those searching for a reason to enjoy it, that they may be comforted in the hope and joys life brings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. For our sick, the Ard family, Christopher Azabol, Andrea Amelia Burnaby, Norman Smith, Maria Gallagher, and those listed in the bulletin, that the Lord will restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those that have died in the peace of Christ, Mary, Lou, Mary Louise Calabrese, Terry Bussum, Elizabeth A. Hayes, Loretta J. Pelea, George O'Pete, Carol Yensko, Gladys D. Vargas, Malai Mula Ortega, Robert F. Wilner, Kathleen M. Wilner, and especially for all souls of the Marino and Dista families, that they may be welcomed into the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of mercy, you raised your son from the dead. Hear the prayers of your children and, ask, and answer their prayers, for they ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The offertory hymn is number 594, In God Alone. Then I saw a new earth, a new heaven, and the first heaven and earth disappeared. No more wars, no more hate, no more hunger. that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the praise and the glory, and glory of, of his name, name for, for our, our good, good and the good, good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born by the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we proclaim the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister unto you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, Cardinal Dolan, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But the from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. If not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord continue to be with you always. And with your spirit. With love in our hearts, my dearly beloved in Christ, let us now offer to one another the sign of peace. Beloved in Christ, look here. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are all those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am not, I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof. But only, but only say, say the word, word and, and my, my soul shall, shall be healed. Show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O oh Lord. The communion hymn is number 348, Spirit and Grace. In this. 
tent, the rectory office will be closed 
in observance of Veterans Day. Also this coming Friday, November 10th, the Monsignor Francis J. Ansborough Columbiettes will be hosting a fundraiser downstairs in the St. Joseph Hall. It's called the Night at the Races. It will be at 7 p.m. It's a $10 entry fee and refreshments will be served. There's still flyers on our back table where we keep our bulletins if you'd like to take one of the flyers home and spread about the Columbiettes next fundraiser. And finally, on the last weekend in September, we did our annual second collection in support of St. Joseph Seminary. And on that weekend, we welcomed a fourth year seminarian by the name of Jonathan Castro. Yesterday morning at St. Joseph Seminary, Jonathan was ordained as a deacon. And starting next weekend, Jonathan will be present with us on all the weekends leading up to his ordination. So we continue to pray for vocations to the priesthood, to the diaconate, and to the religious life. I hope you have a good week. By the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 390, City of God. Of death. 